we have a current of I at Z and a voltage of V of Z. Okay, so Z is just A plane. I put, pick, picked A plane along the Z axis. Okay, and at Z plus delta Z, we have I at Z plus delta Z and V at Z plus delta Z. Okay. You guys with me? So I'm basically saying each section looks like any other section, and I'm just going to look at it in slices, and, you know, they're like infinitesimally small, infinitesimally close to each other, and each one of them is going to have, so each section has its own inductance. and capacitance, okay? And e, the inductance is gonna be, so L that we're talking about is gonna be in, so Henry is the unit of inductance. It's gonna be Henry per meter or di unit of distance, right? Because each section has a inductance per unit length. You guys with me? And then the capacitance is going to be farads per meter or whatever unit of distance it is. Okay? So if I want to find the inductance of each section, I multiply this L by the delta Z, and that gives me the actual inductance. Right? So it'll be Henry's per unit length times the, the length will give me Henry's for just this teeny tiny section, okay? So I just have to remember to do that. Okay, so again, um, so this is where I will remind you guys that on purpose, I'm not looking at resistance, okay? So there'll be, in a real world system, there'll be the resistance of this line, because some metal will have some resistance, and any kind of a real dielectric will have its own resistance here. And so the combination of those two will give you something called loss in your transmission line. And the way loss looks like, I erased my digital signal, but like it starts at one volt. By the time it gets to the end, it'll look like nine tenths of a volt or eight tenths of a volt. It'll be like some of that stuff will get, will get lost. And that's a lossy transmission line. So right now we're talking about a lossless infinite transmission line for the moment for the mathematical we could come up with a simple model and then we'll sort of add to it okay so we're not looking at resistance but in reality resistance does exist okay so again uniform lossless transmission time let me write that down so so doing analysis for uniform lossless transmission line. And that's just to simplify our analysis. We will just add the, the resistances later. OK. So again, let's say I have this. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to draw the thickness of the line. This is the, the two lines, right, the two signals in my transmission line. This is the Z direction going this way, okay? So each one of these sections, so let's say I'm gonna take this guy. Let's say this is at, this is at Z, okay? That plane I'm looking at, I'm just gonna look at that, that plane in my transmission line. That's gonna have its own capacitance and its own inductance. Okay, so it's going to have a capacitance C delta Z and an inductance, sorry guys, it's going to have C delta Z and an inductance L delta Z. <clears throat> You guys with me? You guys, so you guys are clear why I'm multiplying C by delta Z and L by delta Z? 
is because the values of C and L are per unit length for a transmission line. Okay. So for that little bit, we'll have that guy. Okay, now if I look at a, another section at Z plus delta Z, okay, it's gonna have its own capacitance. So it'll be C delta Z and L delta Z. So we'll have a bunch of these capacitance and inductors sort of distributed along the line. So you can imagine millions, billions, whatever. I just, I'm just slicing it really thin, okay? And then section, so Z minus delta Z over here, it's gonna have its own inductance of L delta Z, C delta Z, and this will go on forever, and then this guy's connected. So this is at point, this is point Z, this is point Z plus delta Z, this is Z minus delta Z, and there will be Z plus 2 delta Z, Z plus 3 delta Z, Z plus 1 billion delta Z, and we'll just keep going, right? Because I've sliced it really thin. Okay, so we're just going to have a bunch of these pairs of capacitance and inductance. Like the transmission line. You guys, you guys with me? Where's it good? Okay. Yeah. That's Mike. Like a, a, yeah. A naturally occurring property of the cable. Just like zooming in like really small and take a slice of it, it's gonna have a synthetic and capacitance space between the two wires. Yeah. Yeah. And and we can do that because we've we've said the separation between the two wires, the thickness of the two wires, all that stuff is going to be constant during the whole transmission line. So I can use the same L, like this L and C are not different than that L and C. Because I've said it's uniform. I made it, like I'm going to try to make it uniform. So I can use that same L and C for all the slices. OK. So, when we look at each section, okay, so again, I, we're doing this, looking at this transmission line without Maxwell's equation. We're just going to use Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law to get ourselves familiar with the transmission lines for the first few weeks, and then we're going to go there. So, we're going to use Kirchhoff's voltage law to look at this one section, okay? So, we're going to go, okay, we're going to go look at this loop. Who remembers Kirchhoff's voltage law? Nice. Mike remembers. Come on. Yes. Okay. So Kirchhoff's voltage law for for the guys who people who don't remember. So it's like a circuit thing, right? So if what it says is if you had a bunch of voltages around the loop, so this is V1, V2, um, V3, and I go around the loop, basically the sum has to be equal to zero. So if I'm going around this loop, right, so this is this Kirchhoff's voltage law, is when you start on the loop of these voltage drops, if you go around the loop, you have to get to the same place, right? So you can't have extra high or low, it makes sense. So this is the law. So I can go, I'm going around this loop, so I'm going to do the same thing, okay? So, oh, I didn't draw, let's see. So each, here you, I would have I uh, at, oops, sorry, I at, this is I at Z here. This is V at Z. So this is V at Z plus delta Z, okay? So first thing is I'm going to go from here to here, and that's going to be V minus V at Z plus 
whatever is voltage across in this inductor, okay, that's going to be that inductance is L delta Z. Why L delta Z? Because L is in Henry's per unit distance times the distance of delta Z gives you the actual inductance. Remember, the voltage across an inductor is L di dt. Okay, so L delta Z di at Z dt. So in general, by the way, that's why it's stuck in the T here. In general, I could be also a function of time. So I'm making it a general case. Okay. So actually, this is going to be ZV, VZ. Oh, sorry. Plus, um, let me just for the sake of just, well, what the heck? V at Z plus delta Z T is equal to zero. So I'm doing this Kirchhoff's voltage law around this section. Okay? So the voltage drop across the capacitor minus the voltage drop across the inductor minus the voltage drop across this capacitor, it all has to come down to be the same from where I started. And that's the Kirchhoff's voltage law. You guys see what I did? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, is that Z1 T or Z? This, is, is it this one? Yeah. Yeah, Z comma T. Sorry, Z comma T. So I'm just sort of specifying that these could be a function of time as well. And then I'm, yeah. They are a function of time. You guys are clear why it's a function of time? Because if I'm launching a wave and it's moving through, depending on what time I look at a section of the transmission line, I'll see a different voltage and current coming through depending on what I launched and when I launched it. Yeah, so this is a general thing of, okay, that's what's gonna happen in that section. And every section is gonna have the same equation. Okay, so this is the equation for what happens in this little bit of a section between Z and delta Z. Same equation will be between Z plus delta Z and Z plus two delta Z and blah, blah, blah. And, and so I'm going backwards. Okay. Sorry, what was, what was, what was your name? Jasmine. Yeah, thanks Jasmine, because I'm coming to your question now. This is when it will appear. My limiting case, which I was giggling about earlier. So I'm going to change this around. So I'm going to say, no, I'm going to move stuff between them, right? So V of Z plus delta Z minus V. I'm going to take the T out for a second. Should I take the T out? Why am I doing this to myself? No, let's let me keep the T. I'm going to just confuse you guys for no reason. So I'm going to remove this stuff over, z plus delta z as a function of t, sorry guys, minus v at z comma t. Okay, I'm going to move this guy over to the other side, so it's going to be minus l di z comma t dt. And I'm going to divide by this delta z here. So I'll, be, I'll put that delta z down here. Okay, so I've just removed stuff around. Okay, and then I'm going back to Jasmine's question. I'm gonna say, okay, in the limit as delta z goes to zero, because I, I, I'm kind of like, I, I picked delta z, I'm gonna make that really, really, really small. I want a continuous type of thing. You guys with me? In that limit, we're going to end up with this guy is going to take, turn into the derivative of V ZT DZ is equal to minus L DI at ZT DT. Right for the handwriting. But, so basically, I'm making that 
delta z really, really small to get, make it a derivative. Any question about that? Jasmine, is that, is that clear now, what, why we were, how thick, how we're making those? We started off to give a physical idea of calling it delta z, and now I'm gonna make, say, I'm gonna make that infinitesimally small, that delta z. So it's kind of like almost this continuous LC, 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 LC sections that are infinitesimally close to each other. And in that limit, it turns into a derivative. Okay? Okay, so, okay, you guys okay with me so far? So, and then we can do the same thing using Kirchhoff's current law to, for example, look at this node, say. Or let's actually look at the, uh, where would I look at? I look at this node. Okay, so I'm gonna look at Kirchhoff's current law. So, so I have this equation, this equation. Then I'm gonna use Ker Kirchhoff's current law. And just to remind you guys of the Kirchhoff's current law, it says that if I have a node and I have currents going into the node, the sum of the currents has to equal to zero at any node. Otherwise, you'll get like voltage built up and stuff like that. Okay, so that's what Kirchhoff's current law does. And we're gonna use that at this node. Okay, so we're gonna get minus i at z because i at z is leaving that node. Okay, plus, sorry, I'm sorry, we're gonna look at this node. i at z plus i at z plus delta z plus c delta z dv dt is equal to zero. Why this guy? Okay. So this is, a, this is like a sidebar. This is like a sidebar to remind you guys. This is a little sidebar. And a sidebar here is for a capacitor, Q is equal to CV. So if I take the derivative of both sides, dq dt is c dv dt, and dq dt is i, is equal to c dv dt. Okay, so this is the current through the capacitor, essentially, sort of the virtual current. You guys with me? And so these are all, yeah, Mike. Charger. Don't be so convinced that you understand it yet. There's more. I'm still trying to understand, man. So anyway, there'll be uh, yeah, there's more twist to this tale. Some okay. So that zero. Okay. So now I'm gonna do the same thing I did here, guys. I'm gonna rearrange. I'm not gonna do it, but I'm gonna rearrange and take the limit as z equal to goes to zero. Okay for this equation. Okay, so I'm gonna end up with D I Z T D Z is equal to minus C D V Z T D T. Sorry guys, I'm 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 taking too many too many shortcuts. So right now I have, I'm just doing the partial derivative with respect to time and partial respect to derivative with, with space. So I'm gonna end up with this equation for the current. Sorry guys, I'm so sorry about my handwriting. dv dt dt. Guys good? So, okay, so I end up with these two equations. Just doing Kirchhoff's voltage and Kirchhoff's current laws around each one of these sort of little sections and take it to the limit as z equal to zero. Okay, so, um, so now I gotta, I wanna have these two simultaneous equations Okay, for voltage and current across that loop, so what do I do with it? So I'm gonna do the following. Now this is all like math 
it's not really sophisticated tricks, but math tricks, just go along with me here. I'm gonna take the derivative of this guy, let's call this one, derivative of that guy with respect to z. So remember, this is partial derivative, okay? So this is partial derivative. I'm gonna take another derivative with respect to z. Okay, so I'm gonna take this guy What I'm trying to do, guys, just let me, let me jump forward like just a couple of lines. All I'm trying to do is to use these two equations to solve for v and i. Okay, I've got two equations, two unknowns, and that's what I'm like, trying to play around with that stuff. So I'm going to take that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to z. And that's going to be second derivative of v with respect to z is going to be minus l i z t d z d t. Okay, so I just took the derivative with respect to z. And I'm going to take the, so this was that, this was this first equation here. And then I'm going to take the partial derivative of this respect to time. So I'm going to take um, derivative respect to time of di zt dz, so minus c minus c d by dt, dv, zt, sorry for the mess guys, dt. So all I'm doing is I'm taking, so I had one equation, I'm taking the, der the partial derivative with respect to z, and I had the second equation, I'm gonna take the partial derivative with respect to t, and I'm gonna end up with d um, squared i, z, t, d, z, d, t, whoops, not comma there, sorry guys is equal to minus c d squared of e z t d t squared. Why did I do that? Again, I'm, I'm, I got two equations, two unknowns. I'm trying to solve for b. And notice I created by taking the second derivative, one respect to z, one respect to t, OK? I managed to get this guy. This is the second derivative of i respect to z and t. And also in this equation, I created the second derivative of i with respect to z and t. Okay? So equal to this. So now I can plug this into here. Okay? So it's just sort of like math, trying to solve two equations, two unknowns. And I end up doing that substitution, I end up with the second derivative of v respect to zt dz squared is lc okay I end up with that equation okay you guys you guys see generally what I'm doing okay yeah sure Let me know when you guys are done. So the first one you took with respect to z, the second one with respect to t? Yeah. And all I was trying to do was to get something that looked like something else so I can get, get one equation where both sides are a function of v. See, this is what happens. My class is always takes so it's, it's, it's why This is why, this is the reason, sorry guys, but this is the reason I'm doing the, this analysis first before Maxwell's equations and all that stuff. 
because last semester I did the same thing and then I sort of ran out of time. I want to make sure you guys get this stuff, get a solid basis on this stuff, and then we move to the actual you know, so good demonstration. But are you guys done? Okay. What's your name? Sorry. Jade. Jade. Okay. Thank you. All right, so I can do the same, I'm gonna, I could do the same thing for the current. So I'm, I'm just gonna just write what that would give me. I would take the derivative respect to z on one side, respect to time on the other one, I would get a corresponding equation for the current. And that would be d squared i dz squared is lc d squared i d t squared. Of course, i is both a function of z and t, and this is z and t. So I would end up with these two equations. Okay. Oh, that's a good place to stop. Okay. Okay. So what do we do with these equations? This is where this the giant leap of faith comes, guys. Ready for the giant leap of faith and, and much confusion? Ready? 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 So, okay. So we're in pure math space here. Okay. So these type of equations have like can have general solutions. Okay. Of a certain form, mathematically speaking. Okay? They're called wave equations. These are called wave equations. The solution is in the form of wave equations. Means that there could be a bunch of different functions, a bunch of different types of functions can be meet this requirement, but all the functions need to have this form. Okay? This is going to be kind of confusing here. So, but but it's not, a, it's actually kind of pretty cool. So they can have a form f t minus square root of L C Z or f of t minus square, uh, sorry, plus square root of L C Z. And these are called wave equation solutions. Okay, so what does what does f mean? Well, f could be almost anything. F could be cosine. It could be sine. Could be exponential. Yeah. What are they called? Wave equation. So this this thing is called a wave equation. A function with this type of with this kind of behavior. And I'll show you guys how that what that why it's called a wave equation in a second. It's a little confusing. But why am I saying this? Okay, so again, f could be almost d. Why almost anything? Because you know this is a mathematical in our world. Sorry, it could generally be anything, but in our world, it can almost be anything. Like it, because we're we're dealing with the real world, this is a mathematical response to a mathematical problem. But like you don't want f to go to infinity at some point because there's no infinity in our world. So as long as it's well behaved, any f is okay. Why is any f okay? Because f, why am I keeping it in terms of f? Why am I keeping it in terms of f? Because f is whatever function describes what I launched into the transmission line. Okay, so if I launch the sine wave into the transmission line, this would be sine of whatever, t minus blah, 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 L, C, Z, okay? If I threw in a square wave into the transmission line, you can sort of decompose the square wave into sines and cosines or exponentials, and that's what shows up. So it could be, a, for a square wave, this would be, f would be really, really complex depending on the rise fall times, but inside each one of those cosines, sines, exponents, or whatever my function is, it would have this or this. This is the critical part. This is what makes the wave equation. You guys are with me? 
Okay, and you'll and you'll see. I'll just show you guys why it's called the wave equation. Okay, so that that's this is the general form of something that's an answer to that. Okay, so we can come to this in a second, but so let's look at the implication of what it looks like. What what it why is having a function like that mean? So let me say that. So let's say we have v of z of t is equal to f of z minus t over square root of lc. So I just re, so I can pull out the uh, square root of lc out. Sorry. Sorry, I have a question. Yeah. So the equations that we just derived, the ones we did, uh, that would give us like the chlorine of the voltage in this specific area. It's giving you the value of the voltage and current at any point in the transmission line. Okay. And so that's what we're that's what we're looking for. We're we're saying we're launching something into the transmission line and we want to see at every point in the transmission line every point z and at every point in time t what is the voltage and what is the current at that point in the transmission does that make sense and that's that's what we're trying to do okay so what we did was we broke that transmission line into a bunch of little segments we did a kirchhoff's voltage law and kirchhoff's current law for each one of those segments and then we said, okay, what's the limit as that segment gets very, very small? Is that you guys with me? So, so now we've got this funky, we, we know this is the form of the, but of course the, the actual voltage and the actual current depends on what entered the transmission line, right? Because, but we just know it needs to have this form. But the actual F depends on what I launch into that transmission line. Okay, and now we're going to look at the implication. Okay, so let's say, so that's, that's the kind of function I have. And then I'm going to, this is my attempt at a funky signal entering the transmission line. So I'm just going to draw a funky, this is going to be my funky voltage, just to show you that F can be like kind of anything. So let's say F is this. This is my F. I'm, I'm not, I don't even know what the equation for this thing looks like, okay? So it's your F, okay? So at, let's look at what happens at T equal to zero. Okay, you guys with me? Okay, so I'm gonna draw the transmission line. Okay, at T equal to zero, so I'm gonna look at, um, at, I'm gonna get V F Z T equals to zero is equal to F of Z. Because my T is said, okay, that time zero, that's gonna be zero, right? So I'm just gonna get F of Z, I'm gonna get this function, okay? So because I will not be able to redraw this exactly again, Draw it to the side. Oops, I drew it in a bad color. So, color, let's make it red. And now I'm gonna copy it and paste it. Oh, it's still the same color, why? Give me red, okay. So that's what it's gonna look like. Okay, time equal to zero. You guys with me? Okay, now let's look at, see what happens at a small, whoops, at t is equal to delta t, where delta t is greater than zero. So just a small amount of time later, what happens? So I'm gonna look at that. Okay, so I'm gonna have my transmission line. Well, let me first put my equation. So v at z, t is equal to delta t is going to equal to 
whatever my function is, v f of z minus delta t over square root of lc. You guys with me? I just plugged in delta t for my t. Okay. So for a second there, you guys have to remember what, what happened in sort of like linear system theory. So when you have a situation like this, okay, means your waveform shifted to the right by this amount. Okay, so if I redraw my transmission line, so I'm, this is going to be z, z equal to z0, let's say. I'm going to redraw my transmission line. So basically, this is at a later time. So this is um, delta t. So this is z is equal to z0, and this is z is equal to delta t over square root of lc. So what, what happens at the time delta t later, okay, this waveform moves over by this distance, delta t over square root of lc, okay? By the way, this tells you that square root of lc should have unit that like, when we get time over that, we get distance. You guys with me? So we're talking about, this will give you units of distance. So this is why it's called a wave equation because something that has something that has this form on the inside of it as t goes incrementally up 0 delta z delta 2 delta 2 z whatever it basically keeps its form but it shifts to the right you guys with me so it's, that's why it's called a wave equation, because it's like this wave going through. So for example, if you had a water wave, it would have like, a, it wouldn't have, of course, inductance and capacitance, but it would have a similar type of form, whereas time would incrementally increase, the wave would move in, in a direction, okay? So when it has a minus sign here, with positive time, it's going to move to this direction. Okay, remember that also a legitimate thing is t, another legitimate solution is t plus this. If it's got a plus, means as I increase time, it's going to move in the minus z direction. Okay, so the wave could either go towards the plus z direction or minus z direction. So if you have a wave that travels this way, or a wave that travels that way. Um, did you have a question? I was just say, so it can be anything, so it could be like a cosine, let's say? Could be a cosine. So if it's a cosine, is that kind of like its phase, the t divided by square root of lc in some sense? Or, or, yeah. yeah, but remember like a cosine, usually have cosine omega t yeah. Yeah, plus yeah. a phase. Yeah, so I'm just like yeah. trying to connect it. So it's like a phase where the phase is changing with respect to time. So mm -hmm. it's not going to be, you know what I'm saying? No, no, I see it's like yeah. different. I'm just trying yeah. to control yeah. the direction. Yeah. So yeah, if you launched, like, if you launched a cos sine wave into this transmission line, which like you kind of would do for, I guess, uh, like FM signal or something like that, then it would just be the sign of something, but inside the sign it would have this form yeah. if it's going in that direction. Because it's not really like changing phase, it's more like that's it at that point. So with respect to Z, that's the phase difference from that point to that point. At that point. Not like actual phase shift, it's just like that's yeah, the difference from that point to that point. Exactly. Yeah. Are you guys with me? Time to bust out those questions we had in four minutes. <laughs> so basically, like, 
this is it's very confusing to me, so just chill out for a second, okay? All we're saying is as long as an equation is, has that form on the inside of it, it represents something that's moving with time, not changing its shape with time. It's just the same shape, but it's just changing its location and time. And because it's a one-dimensional transmission line, it's just it's going in the z direction. Okay? Yeah. Is, is this like the time shift to the frequency we're making? Mm, mama, mama, mama. Not yet. Everything we're talking about is in the time zone. Still, yeah. So it's not. It's, we're not going between them. All it would be correspondence. So I'm assuming L and C are still linked in capacitors. So like this is what you meant by inductance and capacitance. Oh, okay. Per per unit length. Yeah. Is it z equal to z? I'm sorry, I can't agree. Oh, z equal to z zero. Oh. So this is what I'm implying. If this was at z equal to z zero, a time equal to zero, it would end up being at the peak would move to uh, delta z over square root of lc times delta z. Okay. That's a, uh, so let me just write that down specifically. So moved to delta t over square root of lc. Okay, so one, one last thing, one last thing, sorry. You guys remember when we were talking about re like signals going and then reflection going, reflection going, reflecting? That's why uh, when I say z minus delta t means it's going that way, z z plus delta t, whatever, blah, 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 and going this way, we'll need to keep track of both of those because in a general case, as we'll see, stuff will be going that way, it'll be getting reflected. So at any point, you'll, in a general case, you'll be superimposing stuff that's going that way and stuff that's come back, and you've got to kind of sum them up. And the stuff that's come back is your reflection. Okay, sounds good. Thanks for your patience.